Hello everyone, Brother Jerry here, and I just wanted to spend a few moments with you and let you know that I'm praying for you and your family, and we're believing God that you are going to overcome in every situation during this very pressing time. I have some things I want to share with you from the Word of God, and I want to start with the book of Philippians, something that the Apostle Paul said, and I'm going to be reading in verse uh, 27 of chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. And then verse 28, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. These are very important instructions for the time in which we live right now. With the coronavirus and the outbreak and everything that's going on around us right now, these are important instructions. And I want to share with you from my personal notes of some things that I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to hear right now. I want you to understand that what Paul is saying is make sure that your words line up with the Word of God. That's important. And you know this. It's not anything new. You learned this a long, long time ago. You know, I've been doing this now for 51 years. This is one of the first things I learned from Kenneth Copeland back in 1969. He learned it from Kenneth Hagin. And we know that our words are powerful. Our words carry life, they carry death. And what comes out of your mouth is vitally important to your outcome. Simply because the Bible teaches us that our words are carriers. They carry life, they carry death. They carry blessing, they carry curse. Listen to what Proverbs 18, 21 says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The message translation says, words kill, and words give life. This is the reason why God's word is referred to as the word of life. When you're speaking God's word, you're speaking words of life. That's important. Now, right now, there's a lot of things going on in the media, and uh, I'm not saying ignore everything they say. You know, I'm following the guidelines that they're saying. Our family's following the guidelines that our president has given us and our local government has given us and that's why I follow those guidelines, but be very cautious about what comes out of your mouth. Don't allow words that carry failure and defeat and death to be spoken out of your mouth, and I would advise you to also instruct your family to do the same. Be cautious of what comes out of your mouth, particularly in times like this. Now, this is important any time, but especially in times like this. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 18 says, the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health. The Amplified Bible says, the tongue of the wise brings healing. Did you know that your words will bring healing? Your words will bring sickness? Your words will bring life? Your words will bring death? You're in control here. God has given you the authority to be in control of your own circumstances. Don't allow Satan to deceive you into talking everything that the media is saying. They're talking death. They're talking failure. They're talking defeat. They're talking losing everything you've got. No, don't allow all that to come out of your mouth. Stay with the Word of God. God's Word is still unchangeable. His Word, the Bible says, the grass withers, the flower fruits fades, but the words of our God will stand forever. No matter what's going on around us, it doesn't change the word of God. So remember, speak the word. Don't speak doubt and unbelief. Don't speak death. Don't speak failure. I know sometimes it's hard, but you can do this. If, if you couldn't do this, then the Bible wouldn't have instructed us to do it. The Holy Spirit is your helper, so ask Him to help you take control over your mouth, over your tongue, over your words. Amen? Your words have everything to do with how you live your life. The book of James teaches us that if we learn how to control our tongue, then we can also control our lives. James chapter 3, verse 10 says, Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, our life and death. My brethren, these things ought not be so. The message translation says, my friends, this simply can't go on. In other words, you can't talk blessing one moment and talk curses the next moment 
You can't talk life one moment and talk death the next moment. You can't talk success one moment and talk failure the next moment. No, make sure your words are lining up with the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. So keep victory in your mouth. Keep victory in your vocabulary. Keep victory on your mind, praise God. And just make up your mind that if you can't talk the word, then just shut up. That's what Kenneth Copeland told me years ago. I said, Brother Copeland, when I first heard him preach these things back in 1969, one day I had an opportunity to talk to him and I said, Brother Copeland, I'm doing everything you told me to do and it's not working. He said, Jerry, your problem is your big mouth. And he said, you need to learn the vocabulary of silence. And then he walked off and left me with that. And I thought, the vocabulary of silence, what in the world is that? I've never heard that phrase before in my life. I said, Lord, what is the vocabulary of silence? He simply said, if you can't talk my word, then just shut up. I said, you got that from Kenneth Copeland. He said, no, son, Kenneth Copeland got that from me. So if you can't talk the word, just be quiet. Amen? Now, the Bible says in verse 13 of the book of James, the message translation, do you want to be counted wise? Well, I want to be a wise person, and I know you want to be a wise person as well. So he's saying, if you want to be a wise person, then heed these words. Your words can make you, your words can break you. So it's important that you put a guard over your vocabulary. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 says, a wise man will hear and will continue to learn. Are you listening? A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. So even though you might have heard these things before, you know, I've had people say, Brother Jerry, you mean we have to go back to watching what we say? I always say, why did you ever quit? Why did you ever quit watching what you say? That's not something you just learn and then one day you let go of that and go into something new. No, this is something that you need to practice every day of your life. The message translation implies that if you'll listen to what God's Word is saying and apply it, then here's what the message translation says. You'll know how to live well. Do you want to live well? Then listen to what God's Word is telling us and then appropriate it in your life. It's not enough just to hear it. It's doing it. The doer of the Word is blessed in his deed. Now, uh, don't let this go in one ear and out the other. Even though you're saying, Brother Jerry, I've heard this before. Well, I believe the Spirit of God has instructed me to tell you you need to hear it again. And you need to hear it now, perhaps more so than ever before. Watching your words is vital all the time, but especially in times like these. Let's, let's go back to what the Apostle Paul was saying in Philippians chapter 1, verse 28. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Now our adversary is the devil. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy and so Paul is telling us that we are not to allow him to terrify us. What's going on right now in our world? Fear, terror. I mean, people, uh, my wife went to the grocery store yesterday and she said it was an eerie feeling the way people were acting. Uh, there was such fear in the atmosphere. Well, the Bible tells us do not allow our adversary to terrify us. Do not allow him to to cause us to open ourselves up to fear. Uh, our adversary, which is Satan himself, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you don't have to let him do it. You don't have to just stand by and allow him to, to, to do that to you. You have a say in this. The Bible says, cast down every imagination and every thought that does not line up with the Word of God. So practice that. And once again, be sure you do it during times like these. Why? Because fear gives access to the devil to your life. Just like faith gives access to God to our lives. So stay in faith. The Amplified Bible says, do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated. And what's going on right now? Fear, intimidation. Don't let that happen in your house. You have authority here. So tell the devil, I'm resisting you, I'm resisting fear, I'm resisting terror, and I will not be frightened by this 
God is on my side, and if God be for me, no one and no virus can successfully be against me, praise God. So stay in faith. I, I want to I leave you with this. Confess scriptures like this. You know these verses. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. I like to put my name in that verse. No weapon formed against Jerry Savell. No weapon formed against Carolyn Savell. No weapon formed against our family, our staff, our church, our friends. No weapon formed against them will prosper. Put your name in this verse and say it often, quote it often. Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Well, I say it like this. Christ has redeemed Jerry Savell, Carolyn Savell, our family, from the curse of the law. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that every sickness and every disease, and that would include coronavirus, is under the curse. And what does the Bible say? We are redeemed from the curse. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 21 says, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in this book, is under the curse. Well, you won't find the word coronavirus in Deuteronomy chapter 28, but you will find verse 61, also every sickness and every plague. Now that's an important word. Every plague, which is not written in the book of the law, is under the curse. So that includes coronavirus. Yeah, once again, you won't find that word, coronavirus, but Deuteronomy chapter 28 has got us covered. The word plague refers to any serious infection or epidemic uh, with a high death rate and, in, and any large scale calamity. That's what a plague is. Well, isn't that what's happening right now with this coronavirus? Well, thank God we are redeemed from every plague. We're redeemed from it. Say it with me right now. I am redeemed from every plague. I am redeemed from coronavirus. And finally, a verse that we all know that is important for us to appropriate in such a time as this, Psalm 91, verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague, there it is again, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And what is a plague? It is a inf serious infection, an epidemic disease with a high death rate and any large scale calamity. And what does the Bible say? Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. These are important verses to hold fast to. That's once again, what the Bible says, and we need to be talking the Bible and not what the world is talking. So hold on to these verses that I've shared with you today. And I want to encourage you just simply stay in faith. The Bible says, and one of my favorite verses all these years has been 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, and it's certainly appropriate for these times. Your faith will overcome the world. We're praying for you and your family, and you're going to overcome. You're going to make it. Just stay in faith. Keep your eyes on God, and don't let the word depart out of your mouth. Amen. God bless you.